It's like if you had fresh dirt and then you mashed it into an oak barrel and then you grinded it up in a blender full of flowers and then you smelt it and then drank it. It's kind of what this has given me um, for a vibe here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today I'm going to be reviewing Rebel Cask Strength Single Barrel. So Rebel Cask Strength Single Barrel is a weeded bourbon. Uh, I don't think it's a weeded whiskey. It definitely, yep, it's bourbon whiskey. So it is a weeded bourbon. It is 120 proof, which is 60% alcohol. And I got it from my Festival of Foods. So it's a Festival of Foods store pick. Um, I don't know much about this bottle. I know it's uh, distilled and aged in Kentucky for Lux Row. Uh, same with the Ezra Cask Strength, and that's in Bardstown, Kentucky. And I know that it's a weeded bourbon, and I've had Rebel Yell back back when it was called Rebel Yell, but I've never had it after they switched to being just Rebel, and I've also never had uh, Cask Strength or a single barrel version. So we're gonna see here how well, how nicely it plays compared to um, compared to its younger, less proofed brother. Wow, so I'm, okay, so I'm getting some sweetness here, but it's not overwhelming the way, um, the way some other bourbons are, especially some weeders. It's almost got a, a floral note to it. It, it does smell a little ethanol-y, um, that's coming from the 120 proof. Uh, it's not, the way the, the way the Ezra was, it wasn't very potent in the ethanol aspect, but this is a little bit more aggressive on the nose. But I'm getting some sweet fruits, more of a, a apple-y, apple-skinned, and a damp hay, well, wheat, funkiness in it. A little bit of nuttiness, um, not too much. I'm not sure how, how old it is. If it says somewhere on the bottle. I'm not seeing an age statement, so I have no idea how old it is. All I know is that it's a single barrel at 120 proof, so, and that it's a weeded bourbon. If I find any of the information, uh, mash bill age statement, I'll put it up on the screen here for you guys. Um, but I'm getting getting some nuttiness, uh, which can sometimes be a sign of youngness. It's sweet and florally, um, kind of like perfume, like a flower bed. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Makers. I know it's because probably because it's a weeded um, bourbon, just like Makers is, but it's definitely got some aspects from the Maker's Cast Strength that I'm finding in this one. Wow, okay. So it drinks hot. Whew. The proof is there. Um, wow. Some, some caramely oak, very oaky. Um, that floral note is really coming through. It, uh, it's really aggressive. I don't know if that's because my first um, cast strength of the night 
or if it really is drinking that hot and also it's a neck pour so it hasn't had time to really open up and show me its true colors but that was um, aggressive and uh, no, not an apparent amount of spice but it, it did feel hot like it was spice but it wasn't spice. it was like a dry spice I don't really know how much to explain that but it it wasn't like baking spices like your cinnamony um, that you would get in uh, the Remus or the uh, Wild Turkey 101 um, but it, it was hot like uh, like peppery I wouldn't say black pep pepper but I would say like the vegetable like if you had a hotter pepper that you were eating that kind of hot to it yep it's very floral um, not sure what else I'm getting out of here it's I can't tell if it's complex or not in complex at all it, it smells sweet on the nose but I didn't get much of it on the palate it could have just been my sensory overload for my palate burning up but um I have to go in for another taste here Yeah, so I'm getting that floral note coming through and it's got that nuttiness on the palate. Um, wasn't as hot that time. I mean, it was hot, but not as ethanol-y, more of uh, that dry hotness that I was telling you about. Um, it really isn't the most complex thing in the world, but it's not horrible. Uh, I paid $55 for this uh, festival, same price as the Ezra um, Cast Strength. This is okay, but I don't know how, my, how I'm feeling about it. It's not my favorite in the world. Um, I don't know if it's not my palate or if someone out there might like it, but uh, I, I don't know. It's not... Not my cup of tea, that's for sure. I really thought that I really thought that this would be one that I would enjoy because typically, weeders really give you a, a sweeter note, and it's not it's not necessarily the um, the wheat that's giving it the sweet note. It's a lack of rind spice that you're getting that it comes off as sweet. But I wonder. I don't like I said. I don't know the mash bill of this in particular bottle, so. I don't know if the wheat's replacing the rye or um, if they're adding meat, if it's a poor grain, uh, it doesn't say. Like I said, if I find it, it would be on the screen earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just so perfumey and and floral and aggressive. I don't know. It's Some things have those notes, but they still have that sweetness that that you like, that you want to get with a bourbon. Uh, and this one just isn't doing it for me. I'm getting the, the, the nuttiness and the, the floralness. It's like if you had fresh dirt and then you mashed it into an oak barrel and then you grinded it up in a blender full of flowers and then you smelt it and then drank it. It's kind of what this has given me um, for a vibe here. And I don't know if they're all like this because this is a uh, store pick single barrel um, so they could be drastically different and yeah oaky uh, there is a hint of vanilla uh, in there and caramel, but it's not very much. Um, it's just that florally sweetness, perfumey dirt, I would say, is a, a big aspect in this one. Um, the oak is very apparent. Uh, nuttiness, I don't know, I would say probably somewhere close to a, a walnut or one of those big Brazil nuts. Uh, nothing like a cashew or anything like that. Um, those sweeter, fattier nuts, but... 
overall, for $55, I'm not sure how the grade's gonna do for this one. Last last taste, I'll uh, let you know if it if it ta tastes any different. Any redeeming qualities, anyway. Stand by my earlier statements. Floral, earthy, not my palette. Well, you know what that means, it's grading time. Uh, so for the Rebel Cast Strength, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a C minus. I don't think that I would buy this again. Uh, maybe, maybe I would try buying one if I found a, a non-store pick or maybe from a different store. It could be it could be the store pick. Don't um, don't take my review for granted, thinking that this is bad whiskey because it could be great and it could fit your palate amazingly. I'm not one who likes that uh, flatter, less sweet, more dry, aggressive flavor. But if that's something you like, it, this could be uh, a bottle that you really enjoy. Um, the reason I'm going with a C minus is because I paid fifty five dollars for this. And I don't think I'm gonna drink it much past where I drank it. I mean, uh, it's not gonna get touched very often, that's for sure. And it's definitely not gonna be something that I go to first when I really want to enjoy something. Uh, it's not a light sipper, so you have to be strapped in and prepared for it. But overall, if, if your palate is tuned to something like this, then go ahead and get it. I would get it. But personally, I'm giving it a C, uh, minus. Um, it was just okay for me. But that being said, uh, this is that's it for the video. If you liked this uh, whiskey, if you've had it and tried it, let me know in the comments if it's just my store pick. My notes are completely off. Um, let me know if you had a store pick or even just a cast strength rebel that wasn't a store pick, how the tasting notes compared to what I gave. Uh, but yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That being said, that's the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next class.